Hey guys, welcome back to another Subaru reprogramming video. In this video, I want to test a whole bunch of different interfaces to make sure that they can work with Subaru Flashlight. We'll see if they work with Subaru SSM3 and 4, and also to find out what the reprogramming speed is. Not that it makes a big difference, most Subarus program within a couple minutes, but we'll compare them anyways. Now, in order to do, to do that, we have to use some special software and hardware because Subaru doesn't allow you to reprogram an ECM with the same calibration. I wish they did. So vehicles that come in with a suspected tune, you could reflash it back to stock. But if the calibration number is the same or if the CVN number is wrong, then sometimes you cannot use the factory Subaru reprogramming software. To get around that, we are going to use Mo Magic Motorsports Flex. Um, this box here, I already read the calibration out of this ECM. This ECM is out of a 2015 Subaru Forester. And I read the calibration out of it. <clears throat> I've already programmed it and then reloaded the stock calibration or the original pro calibration back into it to make sure that this method would work. And it did. So now we can move on to testing it with the different interfaces. So if we didn't know what our CID is, we have four possible choices and we would just kind of have to guess. So obviously you can look at the underhood sticker, see if it has California or federal, and then see if it's a manual transmission or CVT to narrow it down. Now this is the module I'm reading on the bench. I don't know what it came out of really. Um, I told the junkyard I wanted, you know, a module from this year, this year, this year, and this year. And I told them whatever they have in stock, um, I'll take one of those. So I got what I got, and I don't know all the details. But since we know the CID, we can just paste it in right here. And it narrows it down for us right away. So it is a California Emissions CVT ECM for a non-turbo vehicle. We have our decryption keyword, which we need to use once we start programming. Um, it's still visible on the screen when you get to that section, so we don't need to worry about memorizing it or writing it down. Just remember that when you enter it, you need cap lock on. I suppose what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and I'll, I'll start the programming process, show you guys the steps through there, and then once uh, the bar graph actually starts going across the screen, I will merge all the data from all these other ECMs onto the screen, and then uh, we'll just keep track of how long they take. So I have all the devices ready here. I synced them all up to the first frame where it starts erasing the flash ROM. Now the top down R link up at the top left, I had to have top down fix the driver for that. It wouldn't work. Uh, neither would the top down R link light. So neither one of those would show up. So I'm about a week later now um, because I wanted to have that in the mix, but they were able to resolve it. Now it looks like we have quite a few interfaces here that are programming very close to the same speed and we also have a couple that are very slow the obdx gt the launch smart link and the original subaru interface are quite slow but the rest of them are actually cruising along pretty good here and we may actually be close to a tie if they're all communicating on the factory protocol at the factory recommended speed then they all should be fairly close here and it looks like our leaders just have a few more seconds here to button up and uh, this was kind of close. I had to actually, you know, go frame by frame to see who won. And our first completed is the top non. And then we have the two Opus devices. We have the Cardac M. So I guess the three Opus devices, the OBDX Pro FT, the Autel V200 in seventh place. We have the Denso DST010. That is the current OEM interface. And it looks like the DSTi in 8th place. Ninth is the D-Bridge Pro. 10th is the Autel X-Link. And those were within a few milliseconds of each other. And now we have our three follow-up ones here. Um, I actually have this on five times speed up for these last few because they take so long. So I just wanted to compare all of these to you know each other and to verify they all worked for programming. Now... The R-Link got first place by a second. I would say that the Opus devices still have a lead on it because they work with SSM3. Um, the only other devices that work with SSM3 on this list is the DSTi and the Subaru SDi. 
none of the other aftermarket devices work without modifying some code and then hoping that everything works. So I hope you guys kind of enjoyed this rundown of all the different devices I have. I might try this again with some other brands, maybe, maybe Ford or GM. Um, unfortunately, Ford, I have factory subscription annual for IDS, which only works with the VCM2 and 3. I don't have a FJDS to test it with all my devices. So I may have to just purchase a subscription for that. And same goes for GM. Pay, pay the money for the subscription that I can hopefully test it over and over again. I think GM gives you a limit on how many reflashes per VIN you get. And it typically totals the number of modules on the vehicle. But when we come to that point, we'll, uh, we'll figure that out. So if you guys have any questions or comments on any of these devices down below, I'll try to get back to you as quick as I can. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe, click the bell. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.